Howdy. So previously we would seen that the change enthalpy of reaction can be calculated using standard enthalpies of formation. Remember you can do products minus reactants. And you should also remember that because we cannot determine the enthalpies of formation in absolute terms, we define elements in their center states as having zero enthalpies of formation. Also we saw that the change in enthalpy for a reaction is equal to the amount of heat absorbed by the system. And so we can define the unit rest is composed of system plus the surroundings, and only heat and work can go between the system and surroundings. This video is on Hess's law. Hess's law gives us another way of calculating the change enthalpy of a reaction, and hence the amount of heat absorbed or emitted by a reaction, or emitted by the system. Hess's law can help us understand a complicated process by breaking up into simpler steps. And so what you should be able to do after watching this video is be able to describe Hess's law, you should be able to use Hess's law to calculate the change enthalpy of a reaction, given the change enthalpy of other reactions. And so if we look at a simple process of burning methane, and so we'll start with methane plus oxygen. Now, we can do it in two processes. We can do it directly and form CO2 gas and liquid water. Or you can imagine it occurring in two steps, where you form CO2 gas and gaseous water, and the second get step where the gaseous water is converted into liquid water. Now you should remember that internal energy and enthalpy are both state functions, and the importance of the state function is that they only depend, the change in the state function only depends on the final initial state. And so for this reaction, our initial state is here, our final state's there, it does not matter if we do it in one step or we do it in two steps. And so Hess's law works because enthalpy is a state function. And so we can draw this reaction using the plot. We can also think about the reaction, you know, here we have that first step, uh, methane plus oxygen going to CO2 plus gaseous water. And then that second step where we have gaseous water going to liquid water. Now we've seen before that, you know, reactions are a lot like mathematical equations. We can flip them multiply them by a number, we can even add them. Please remember if you flip products reactants, you change the sign of your enthalpy. If you multiply the reaction times the number, you have to multiply the corresponding delta H. And now what we're seeing here is that we add reactions, we add the corresponding delta H's. It's also important to note that things common on both sides, so we have two H2O gas, two H2O gas, actually do get canceled. Again, a lot like mathematical equations. And again, Hess's law works because enthalpy is a state function. State functions only depend on, the change in the state function depends only on the final and initial state. If you may remember a while back ago, we when we talked about the formation of ionic solids, we imagined a process where we can go from sodium metal plus chlorine gas to the sodium chloride solid. And while the sodium chloride solid is not um, formed this way, it's instructive because it shows us the energetic energetics, what steps takes energy, what steps um, evolve energy. And so if you start with sodium metal and chlorine gas, you can imagine vaporizing the sodium into sodium gas, and it's going to cost about 92 kilojoules per mole. You can break the chlorine-chlorine bond, that's going to cost about 120 kilojoules per mole. Rip off electron from the sodium, that's the ionization energy of the sodium, giving you sodium ion in the gas phase. Add that electron to the chlorine, that's the electron affinity um, for chlorine. And now we have sodium ions in the gas phase and chloride ions in the gas phase. And so we saw in the gas chapter that gases are typically um, empty space, and so we can typically neglect intermolecular forces. Now if we form the solid, we're bringing those into the intermolecular forces are important. The ion-ion interaction is important. The reason the sodium chloride solid is much more stable than sodium ions and gas phase and chloride ions gas phase is the ion-ion interaction. You should also remember that you know going from sodium chloride solid to the sodium ions and the chloride ions in the gas phase, that's the lattice enthalpy. So the lattice enthalpies are always positive. But again, this is an example of Hess's law. We can add up these steps to get a net reaction. Um, by looking at this process, we can uh, see that you know, ionic solids are formed because of the strength of the ion-ion interaction. We can see that you know, the ionization energy of removing the electron from the metal 
it is costing us the most amount of energy. If we look at another example, you know, we can make hydrogen gas from water involving two steps. And so liquid water plus 42 kilojoules per mole gives us gaseous water. Gaseous water plus heat gives us hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas. Now, if we want to know for the net reaction, we can add these two reactions. And if we add the reactions, we also have to add the heat. And so we see that the entire process takes 285 kilojoules of heat. Now, again, things come on both sides cancel. And so the liquid, the gaseous water cancels the gaseous water, and that's our net reaction. Now, remember, for endothermic processes, uh, react, heat is a reactant. Um, heat is going from the surroundings to the system. And so we can write down the heat explicitly as a reactant. Also, we can write it in terms of a delta H. And so writing it this way is exactly equivalent to writing it that way. Now, again, delta H is equal to Q, constant pressure and expansion, and assuming only expansion work. And so Q is positive, meaning heat's going into the system. And so all, all these are endothermic processes. And so again, if you add reactions, you have to add the corresponding delta H's. If we look at another example, um, you're asked to calculate delta H for this reaction, knowing these two reactions. Now, sometimes for the reactions given, you're, you're going to have to manipulate them. And so typically what you want to do is look for a compound that's unique. And so sulfur is here. There's only one place where the sulfur is in these two reactions. And so we have sulfur as a reactant, sulfur as a reactant, one sulfur, one sulfur. And so we don't have to do anything and change that reaction. If we look down here, now SO2 and SO2, so we don't want to use that compound. Here we have SO3. In the reaction that we're trying to determine, we have SO3 as a product, SO3 as a product. So we're not going to have to flip it. We have one SO3, one SO3, so we don't have to multiply it by a number. And so we probably can just add these two reactions. And again, things come on both sides cancel. If you add reactions, you add the corresponding delta H's. And so by adding those two reactions, we do get the reaction that we're looking for. And so Hess's law is really helpful because sometimes you don't have the enthalpies of formation that you need, but if you have the change enthalpy for a reaction, sometimes you can determine the change enthalpy for a reaction that you're looking for. And so for the reaction that we're looking for, we get delta H is minus 395.7. If you look at another example, and so using these two reactions and their delta H's, we're trying to find the delta H for that reaction. And again, we want to look at for something that's unique. And so notice that we got carbon solid here. And it's a product. It's the only place where it's in these two reactions. And here it's a reactant. And so we're going to want to flip the top reaction and divide by two. And so if we flip it, we have to change the sign. And if we divide by 2, 788 divided by 2 gives us 394. Now you can change the sign, then divide by 2, or divide by 2 and then change the sign. You'll get exactly the same answer. Now if we look at the second reaction, we have two um, water gas, two water gas, reactant, reactant, 2 and 2. And so we probably don't have to change that second reaction. Sometimes you'll have to change, you don't have to change either reaction. Sometimes you have to change one reaction. Sometimes you have to change both reactions. Now, if we try to add these two reactions, and again, cancel things coming on both sides. So notice that we got oxygen here, oxygen there. And so we're left with carbon solid, carbon solid, 2H2 gas, 2H2 gas, 2H2 gas, 2H2 gas, and CO2 gas, CO2 gas. So we got the reaction that we're looking for. And if we add reactions, we add the corresponding delta H's. And so 44 minus 394 gives us 90. And so the delta H for that reaction has to be 90. And so again, Hess's law can be helpful to for determining the change enthalpy for reactions that we want. If we look at another example, and so using these two reactions, we want to find the delta H for that reaction. And again, Let's look for things unique. So Fe2O3 is only up here. And so it's a reactant, it's a reactant. And so we probably don't have to change that first reaction. For the second reaction, we have FeO. 
FeO. And so here it's a reactant, here's a product, so we're gonna have to flip it. So we're gonna have to change the sign of our delta H. And we have a one, but we need two, so we're gonna have to flip it and multiply it by two. So flipping it changes the sign. 16.5 times two gives us 33. Now, if we add these two reactions, notice that we have CO2 and CO2. Now, you have two CO2, so we'll cancel two of those CO2s, and you'll be left with one carbon dioxide. You have CO, carbon monoxide, two carbon monoxide, and three carbon monoxide. And so these two will cancel with two of those. You'll still be left with one carbon monoxide. You have two irons and two irons. Those are canceled. And so our net reaction is this. And so we have iron oxide, carbon monoxide, FeO, and CO2. So we got the reaction that we're looking for. And again, please remember, sometimes you don't have to change the reactions that you're adding up. Sometimes you have to change one. Sometimes you have to change both. Remember, if you flip products reactants, you change the sign of your delta H. If you multiply the reaction times the number, you have to multiply your delta H times the number. If you add two reactions, you add the corresponding delta H's. And so we got the delta H for that. And so change the enthalpy of reaction can be determined from enthalpies of formation by doing the products minus reactants thing. We also see that we can determine change in enthalpies of reactions using Hess's law. Uh, the change enthalpy of one path is going to be a change enthalpy of another path because enthalpy is a state function. I hope that helps.